Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and DaVinci Resolve 16 has finally been released. So if you've been watching the NAB updates, Blackmagic Design released DaVinci Resolve 16. It has a slew of new features, everything from editing to color correction to fair light, fusion, and a lot more. So if you're new to my channel, over a year ago, I switched to DaVinci Resolve as my main editor. So I switched from Premiere Pro. It was getting a little bit too slow and a lot of just crashes and issues going on. And after switching to DaVinci Resolve, I was super happy with all the optimization that DaVinci Resolve sort of had along with it. And just a lot of the tools worked so much better. Now, one of the great things about DaVinci Resolve is that it's is moving forward as an editor. We're getting new, awesome editing features, super stable editing features, and a lot of just great integration when it comes to fusion with 3D effects, compositing, fair light, all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, I wanna talk about what's new in DaVinci Resolve 16 and some of the awesome things you can look forward to. So I do have DaVinci Resolve 16, the beta on my computer. It's been really awesome, but I'm gonna show you a lot of DaVinci Resolve's footage because right now I don't really have anything to go in depth or show too much stuff like that. So right now I've been using the public beta for the last day or so and I really do like it. It seems really stable, really fast, and some of the new features are very, very awesome. So one of the biggest new features is the new cut page. And basically this is sort of a really fast, just easy editor built inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is mainly for people who are doing really fast content, whether it's YouTube or travel vlogs, or just people that need to get in and out of an editor very quickly and maybe don't need to learn all of the crazy features of an editor. So of course the advantage is that you can jump in, there's a dual timeline setup, which I really do like, where you can see the full scope of your timeline as well as the individual clips and sort of that zoomed in larger clip look. So the great thing is DaVinci Resolve is not dumbing down the software, they're just making it a lot easier to get in and out. And of course, they're leaving the main software there. So in this cut page, it really takes advantage of the space that you have on your screen. So if you're working on a laptop, you're gonna have a bigger program monitor and everything's just very centralized and to the point. Clips that you sync or multiple audio tracks are gonna show up as just one on your timeline. So again, it's a lot more simplified for people who aren't editors and don't need to do too much dialing in. You have your effects controls, text, all that kind of stuff right there, easily to get to. And again, you can easily jump in there, throw those in, and just create and edit very fast. It also has the quick export, which is really nice. Again, you can get it to YouTube or Vimeo very, very quickly. And just being able to jump into an editing software and easily learn the basic features and be able to get things out very quickly is something that a lot of people wanna do. Now, of course, one of the awesome advantages is, of course, DaVinci Resolve support supports a collaborative workflow. So let's say you had a content creator who was shooting most of their stuff and doing a basic edit on pretty much everything. So they can actually be working with other editors who are working in the editing, Fairlight, Fusion, and color pages, while the main person is sort of throwing together an edit in the cut page. Now that makes a huge, huge workflow improvement for again, people who aren't so familiar with video editing and don't really need to be because they have the other people around them to do so. One of the biggest and new things is when creating a new timeline, you can actually change your aspect ratio and your timeline settings. Yes, this is something that a lot of people wanted and you can easily now when you make a new timeline, change both the actual timeline settings as well as the monitoring settings and your output settings. So this is great for me, for someone who does wedding videos, I can make a 2.39 to one version a UHD 16 by nine version and an Instagram version for one whole project or one whole video inside of one project. I don't have to go out and create a new project. Again, this is a lot like Premiere. It just makes things a lot quicker and easier, especially for someone who's making a lot of those different cuts for different sort of aspect ratios or timeline resolutions. One of the next big features is actually the adjustment clips. Now this is basically an adjustment layer. And what you can do is by grabbing this adjustment layer, you can apply it over top of any clip and any effect or anything you do to that adjustment clip is going to affect anything below it. Now, of course, adjustment clips have been around for a long time, and this is something that you can use in pretty much any software. It's in Premiere, it's in most NLEs. But of course, this allows you to add things like maybe a vignette or some type of global effect to several different clips. This is great, let's say you wanna make a global adjustment to a bunch of different clips, whether it's a blur effect or some other type of effect you wanna to add to a bunch of clips. And let's say it's something you might have to change in the future. Maybe you're blurring something and in the future your client says, hey, I need you to blur that more. Well, instead of having to go back and blur every single one and change each clip, now you can just change that adjustment clip and it's gonna adjust everything below it. Now the next features, and this is probably one of my all-time favorite out of everything is the facial recognition in the DaVinci Neural Engine. So basically what this is, is let's say you have a bunch of clips, you can select them all and actually do a facial analysis. 
And what this does is kind of like Google Photos or Apple Photos where it analyzes faces and creates folders based on those. Now these smart bins can be accessed and you can change the name of any person that you have. And this is really, really handy if you're someone who has a lot of different clips and you need to sort by people. A perfect example of this is I actually had a project last year where I had tons of interviews, probably pushing the 50, 60 interview mark. And one of the hardest things was I didn't know who these people were. So when the clients were referencing someone, it was really hard for me to figure out who they were talking about or in what day that was actually shot. So what would have come in really handy was this facial recognition where I could go in, name each of those people as I work with them. And then later on, if someone said, hey, can you go back and see what Joe said here? I can go back, click on Joe's folder and I can find any shot with him or anything of him. That goes for the same if you had to do B-roll of a project. Let's say you were doing B-roll for a client and they wanted to show their CEO of the company. You could actually make an analyzation of all of the clips for the CEO of that company and then sort all of those clips by the CEO and then make sure to find the shot that you need. Again, I think facial recognition is a really awesome and really, really important thing that DaVinci Resolve totally got right. Now, there are a lot of other cool editing features, things like time remappings for slow motion and better stabilization right in the inspector. Of course, you can check out DaVinci Resolve's website for all those small things. I'm just gonna go over mainly some of the big ones. Now, Fusion got a few nice updates, nothing too crazy, but really just stability and improvements of the way things work. Faster masks, GPU acceleration, things like that. So I'm not really gonna go too in depth on those, but again, if you're someone who works in Fusion or does a lot of Fusion work, it just loads and works much faster. In the color page, there's been a couple of those sort of nitty gritty type of things. One of them being the keyframe animations and sort of the open effects keyframes. It's just an easier way of seeing the keyframes inside the editor and an easier way to work with them. Also now they have GPU accelerated scopes. So what this means is your scopes are gonna work a lot better. They're more a live preview, where before sometimes they might take a second or two to update. Again, this is really nice. So in live time, you can see what your scopes are doing. Maybe if there's something that's popping in that's really bright, you can see exactly where it is in real time and adjust those in real time. One of my favorite new color features is the fact that the histograms are now on the curves. So one thing in the past is when you're on the curves panel, you really couldn't tell exactly what values your entire image was without looking at your scopes and then trying to transpose that to your actual curves. So now in any and all of the curve panels, you can see both the color and the luminance values right on the curve panel in a histogram form. So again, this is really easy to balance colors or move colors around and just do whatever you were doing in curves before, but just a lot more intuitive way of doing it. Again, it's a small thing, but it just shows that Blackmagic Design really knows what their customers need and sort of just knows where to be putting their attention towards. The next thing, and this is a really huge one, is the audio color. The great thing about this is it's both an auto balancing and auto matching. So this can easily help you match between two different clips. Let's say you're shooting on a Sony and a Canon, you want to match those clips or you just wanna kinda of get a general idea of where you wanna balance this shot. Me personally, I probably won't use this too much, but I can see where this would be really handy to sort of get a general idea of where a clip should be. Again, there's some other small features, but again, you can go see those at their website. And lastly, Fairlight has a lot of cool options too now. So another cool one is the Elastic Wave. This sort of helps you move things out and stretch things, especially if you're doing things like ADR, where maybe a piece of audio doesn't perfectly sync up, but you can stretch it just a little bit to make sure that it fits and gets a perfect sync. Again, it's not a huge thing, but it's just those little tiny fixes like that that make a big difference. Also, there's a few new Fairlight effects. This is really great and something I totally welcome. One of the things that I sort of thought was lacking was the Fairlight effects didn't really have too many. They have new things like a frequency analyzer, a better limiter. So again, those are really welcome and just really great for getting stuff right in Fairlight, not having to go buy a bunch of VSTs. But anyway, guys, it's been a pretty awesome update for DaVinci Resolve. Again, they're a lot smaller and sort of nitpicky updates, but that's what I really wanna see out of these big releases is Blackmagic Design looking at what they do well and still doing that well, but adding those little things here and there that we need as editors that are gonna make our lives a lot easier. But anyway guys, let me know down below in the comments what your favorite DaVinci Resolve 16 feature was, and I'd love to know what you'd wanna see in the next iteration of DaVinci Resolve. Anyway guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll catch you guys later.